Did you know that you can now join my YouTube channel? And to kick it off, I'm currently offering an incredibly low membership of only $2.99 a month. You'll get special badges next to your name so you can stand out from the rest. You can also access special custom HRU emojis in live chats and in comments. Plus, I'll be adding some exclusive and early release member-only videos from time to time. So go ahead and join this channel and let's build a community right here on YouTube. If you go to calm.com slash holly, you get a special offer of 40% off of a Calm premium subscription and new content is added every week. Go to calm.com slash holly for 40% off of an unlimited access to Calm's entire library. Over 100 million people around the world use Calm to take care of their minds and now you can too. That's calm.com slash holly. You'll wonder why you didn't start using it earlier. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. I have two, two very special guests today. But before I introduce them, as always, I want to give a shout out to my amazing sponsors at RexMD, who make getting generic and branded Viagra super easy. They ship it discreetly to your door. It is, of course, prescribed to you by a licensed physician, but you don't have to go sit in an uncomfortable waiting room. Go to rexmd.com slash holly to get started with your sample pack today. Okay. So I'm super excited about this interview because you'll see when I introduce them, how there's a definite parallel to my own family situation. Um, I have Two guests, as I mentioned, one went from being a successful marketing executive and PTA member to a top performing OnlyFans star in her 50s, and the other is her daughter, who quickly followed in her footsteps. They are the unexpected mother and daughter team taking the adult industry by storm, Ginger Robinson and Amber Blake. Hello, ladies. Thank Hi. you so much for coming. We're so Hi, happy Holly. to be here. Thank you for having us. We are so excited. We've, <clears throat> pardon me, we've been on a ton of podcasts, but we were kind of like, gosh, we hope we get the Holly Randall show. So really? thank you. We're thrilled to be here. Yes. <laughs> I'm always, I don't know. I still am always like surprised when people say yes. Um, I don't, I don't know. Like I, I just, I'm always, okay. I'm, you know what I'm going to say? I'm going to say I'm flattered and I'm going to say I'm thank you very much. I'm You're so welcome. And that's all I'm going to say. Um, so you guys are here um, mm -hmm. on a trip. You don't live in LA. Not yet. <laughs> so what have you guys been shooting uh, while you've been out here? Yeah. So we just got in last night. Um, typically when we make these trips, we make them a week, week and a half long. We are with um, several types of management companies because I also do mainstream porn now. And so I have an agent for that. And then um, we both have an agency that manages our um, OnlyFans brands, if you will, plus the more um, non-porny um, collaborative creator space. Creator space. Um, my daughter is a an actual um, singer by profession. Um, so she goes in that direction. And then I'm always involved in the, you know, the, t the TikTok space with her. And it's also very separate. As far as this trip, it is a shorter one because we're back again in two weeks. But when we leave here, you know, we're headed over to uh, Lena the Plug's shoot house and we have something tomorrow as well, but it's always something going mm. on and we haven't shot anything else. So you are our first one for this trip. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, I hope I'm a good introduction to a wonderfully productive trip. Yes. So, I mean, I guess we're going to start off with the obvious question that everybody wants to know. You're a mother daughter team. Um, so I guess let's start with you. Okay. Um, how did you get into the industry from yeah. being a PTA member? So it's kind of wild. I'll give you the, um, did you know it's not Cliff Notes anymore? It's Spark Notes, these kids call it now. So I'll give you the Spark Notes version of it. <laughs> um, I was a PTA president. I was highly involved in her life. Um, 
And I do have a younger child too, who's a teenager, but I was, you know, chaperone and PTA president and your quintessential suburban mom. And so this is way out of anything anyone, including myself, could have predicted that I would be doing. I was a teacher in my 20s. So I went to grad school, got my master's, I taught, I had kids, and then I went in a completely different direction and I started working in advertising. And when I say I worked my way up the ladder, I was selling $8 newspaper ads. So that's how long ago it was too, to mention newspaper ads. But I started doing that and working for larger and larger companies, helping them. And this is where it comes into what we're all doing now. I created social media, um, digital media strategies um, with targeted advertising across multiple platforms. And I taught Fortune 500 companies how to do that. So Um, COVID had hit and I was exhausted. I was on the road all the time and traveling, you know, by plane every single week. And I was kind of looking for a way out and simultaneously, you know, I said to the universe, help me, like I need to do something something else. And this um, acquaintance mentioned this thing called OnlyFans. I hadn't even heard of it. This was March of 2020. Hadn't heard of it. Um, We ended up working together. I finally kind of, um, at first I said, he he actually said, what do you think about being my, my wife's pretend stepdaughter on OnlyFans. And I said, naked on the internet. You know, I didn't have curls to plot. To- Wait, you were going to be his, you were going to be his- Stepmother. S- it was a, yeah. Oh, stepmother. Yeah. A oh. stepmom to this wife of his. Gotcha. Who yeah. already had an OnlyFans. Gotcha. Um, and that was all she had kind of done. And I didn't have pearls to clutch at the moment, but I was like, never, <laughs> I have children. I would never be naked on the internet. And uh, that ruminated. Uh, one thing led to another. And I had serious conversations with Amber as well as my- younger child who was 14 at the time, you know, what do you think about this? Because as everyone assumes that teenager will walk into school and have the jerk say, your mom's, can I swear yet? Yes, you can swear. Okay. (laughs) Um, I know there's like a time frame where you can't say shit yet, but your mom's pussies on the internet. And, you know, my teenager looked at me and said, why do you care what people think? And I thought, wow, 50 years I've been caring what people think. And, I started doing OnlyFans and I applied what I knew from my career to make OnlyFans successful. And I started a company that would help these girls grow and manage their platforms. And we were top creators in the 0.01, which doesn't matter anymore within six weeks. And I'm like, oh my gosh, look at this go. And I remember somebody reaching out. I don't remember if it was Kieran Lee or... Uh, Vince Jones, he was like, where did you come from? (laughs) And I'm like, it's marketing, baby. It's Mm -hmm. all marketing. And so OnlyFans kind of took off and I had a lot of fun with it. And then I had a lot of invitations. I've shot for Brazzers, Misha X, um, Mike Quasar, um, a whole handful of, you know, just really awesome guys, Ricky Greenwood. And that kind of came after that. And along the way, my, um, real daughter at the time, Amber, was like, hey, mom, my friends and I are starting an OnlyFans. And I was like, okay, God, universe, really? You're going to put my daughter naked on the internet now too? Like, what the hell? And so she kind of did her thing. I do mine. I do shout her out. We do not appear naked together. Mm -hmm. Um, When I shout her out, it's not her vagina. It's pictures of us on Christmas or – at you the know, beach. Yeah. Like, that's like the most scandalous that it gets is at the beach. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And we just support each other mm-hmm. the best that we can. And she's done an incredible job with social media and promoting herself because it's all about the socials, as you know. Yeah. And doing things like this to get your name out with really awesome people. And yeah. so it's just so cool. Like way back in the beginning, this was my bucket list to be on the Holly Randall show. So to wow. see it happen, I'm like, ah, look at this happening. And yeah, so now we're kind of going more in the realm of um, creator status where we want to do snap TV shows and I don't know, TikTok kind of stuff. And so that's kind of our, I don't know, timeline, if you yeah. will. And you moving you- more into things that like social media platforms won't ban us for. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just as like a blanket statement. Yeah. It's such an interesting like 
in the world that we live in now, you know, I've been working in porn for almost 24 years and it's a cool time to get in because it's the first time that creators have been able, to, first of all, that porn stars were even called creators, right? Yeah. Yeah. And have been able to create on their own and have been able to use marketing strategies mm -hmm. to really get themselves out there mm -hmm. and to get their name out there and just all of the freedom that you have to create a brand and do whatever you want and mm -hmm. to have these platforms that, though they hate us, um, you know, are, are really beneficial in getting us out there. So it's, it's a cool time to, to be in porn. I think you guys picked a, a good time to come in. Thank you. So, um, so Amber, how did you react when your mom sat you down and said, Hey, this is like, I want to do porn. Like, were you surprised at all? Um, I mean, yeah, I was surprised. I was like, are you, is this for real? Like, are you serious or is this like a joke? Because I mean, we joke a lot. So mm -hmm. I was, I mean, your mom, who was the PTA president and like we lived in a bubble basically, um, to have someone say that to you is whether it's my mother or literally anyone else, you're mm -hmm. like, are you joking or is this real? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I was surprised, but then she said, no, I'm serious. And she explained the situation and I said, yeah, if that's what you want to do, that's fine. And she was like, are you serious? And I was like, yeah, of course. Yeah. We've always had a really open um, relationship. So um, there's never been a weird thing where like, oh, I can't say sex around my mom mm -hmm. or I am going to sneak out and not tell my mom anything. I was actually a goody two shoes myself. So the fact that I'm in this as well is also kind of a like mind fuck yeah. um, for people that know me. But um yeah, no, I was just supportive from the beginning. So why did you decide to get into it? Did you see like your mom and like she was doing well and it was, it was different than maybe you expected? Like did, did, did your mom getting into the industry make you think, wow, porn is actually not necessarily what people say it is or what I thought it was? Well, I have a background in um, like musical theater, acting, singing, dancing. So I've been a member of like the performing community for a while. So I've never thought that the porn industry or the adult industry was something that should be stigmatized the way that it is, mm -hmm. um, especially because I had friends in um, my undergraduate program who had to work like sketchy jobs to or like sketchy jobs. I guess mm -hmm. you could say, see, I'm, I even say it now because it yeah. just slips the mind. Um, to like even make it through college. So yeah. it never, that wasn't part of it for me. Um, but sorry, I lost my train of thought. That's okay. Uh, <laughs> why you decided to get into it? Oh yeah. So actually like in college, I considered doing it as well. Um, just never had the time and we were like, ah, oh, never mind. Like we're mm. not going to do it. And then She's being too humble. She was also wildly successful with her vocal career. She was working for the NFL, but, um, Major League Baseball, singing national anthem. She was hired for a national tour. She did get her BFA in musical theater with a minor in dance and eventually was hired by a high-end European cruise line to be a lead vocalist, which is huge out over there. It's huge here, too. And so she probably would not have delved into this had COVID not hit at just the right time. I was just really busy and yeah, there wasn't time for it. I mean, of course, if I had had more time, I probably would have done it because, I mean, the money was really awesome to think about. Mm -hmm. But there just wasn't time. And so I actually was working as a lead vocalist, as my mom said, on a European cruise line. We embarked after rehearsals in Europe on March 14th, 2020. Oh, man. Um, long story short, I was on the ship for six days and I was forced to resign. They didn't force me to resign, but I wanted to leave and they wouldn't let me leave unless I resigned. Um, so Again, another mind fuck for me having to resign from my dream job because I felt unsafe because of, pa of a global pandemic, which nobody ever predicted. Right. Uh, so, yeah. yeah, I came home, went through a little bit of a depressive state from, you know, quitting my dream job. And um, then I started working in social media for a couple people from The Bachelor who appeared as contestants or I'm not sure how you would refer to them. I contestants. guess contestants. I've yeah. never watched And managing Netflix, their but... social media. Yeah. yeah. So I was managing social media for people who had um, upwards of like 500,000 um, followers on Instagram and mm -hmm. helping them with their side brands and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, so as my mom was getting into OnlyFans, that's what I was doing. And so I started to fall in love with social media marketing and her success was 
inspiring and I thought back on like well I can't go back to the cruise it's really hard to do singing right now unless I'm just singing for myself mm -hmm. so I need to come up with something so it just seemed like a really good fit um so that's how I started and it was yeah and it was you know how like they say that everything happens for a reason and everything oh, yes. works out the way it's supposed to do you feel that that's the case for you oh absolutely <laughs> um this is actually something that I've been working on like figuring out myself, but I recently like came to the conclusion. Um, so when I started OnlyFans, I went into it thinking, you know what? Fuck it, I'm gonna do it, whatever. Like mm -hmm. who cares what people think? I don't care what people think. And then I got into it and the more that I did it and the longer I was in it, the more I realized, oh wait, I actually did really care what people, like I cared what people thought about oh, yeah. me. And I thought that I was this happy person who just like, did what I wanted and blah, blah, blah. And yeah, I did what I wanted. But in the back of my mind, I'm like, oh my God, I'm being dramatic. Oh my God, I'm being ridiculous. So I'm like, you know what I mean? Just completely gaslighting myself and my true emotions. And then doing OnlyFans and putting it all out there made me realize that I wasn't happy previously. So in a way, I kind of learned to love myself through porn, mm -hmm. which... I literally never, I don't, I, I can't even think of a situation where I would have ended up where I am right now in my mental health journey um, to like love myself the way that I do and to really just live authentically um, unless I did this. So I would never change it ever. It's so interesting that you say that because that is obviously an unexpected answer yeah. um, yes. for most people. But I have heard that so many times from so many people that I've had on my show that I came into porn and I, and I tell people this all the time, the people that I work with, I'm like, porn stars are the best. Like they're the best people to work with. Like I used to shoot for Playboy all the time mm -hmm. and you know, I would shoot uh, playmates and I would shoot like fashion models and stuff like that. And I always just loved shooting the porn stars the most. Like they're yes. just, there's something about having that career where you're so vulnerable mm -hmm. and you just put everything out there, like mm -hmm. you said. Yeah. And that, I don't know, like just lends itself to an attitude that's just more authentic and more like carefree. They're just less, like a lot of times, sometimes these fashion models and like obviously no shade on fashion models. And I shot a lot of amazing like fashion models, but there was this sense of like trying, really trying to be something and then yeah. like doing Playboy and the nudity was like, oh, well, I'm doing it because it's Playboy, but I'm actually not really like, I'm yes. very on the edge about this. And I'm very like Such a good unsure of, like there was like, you could tell there was like this internal struggle yeah. there. I know exactly what you're talking about because yeah. in the audition room in like the theater world, it was always like that. And there's there's no shame to that at all, but it's just, it's a completely, you you once you cross that line, you don't come back from it. And people look at that as something that, is restrictive they're like oh my gosh i'm nude on camera now like what am i gonna do for an acting role or anything but instead it's i'm nude on camera now like what about it so like, what right <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. like what else are you gonna get me for yeah like yeah. literally there's right. nothing that there's nothing left to shame me with yeah and and yet they still find ways to shame us right. <laughs> we had done a podcast um can I say the other podcast or is course, that? Yeah. So we had done No Jumper and we mm -hmm. knew when we go into a podcast, everyone thinks we just show up and, oh, we're so grateful to be here. And um, we did it less with this one because we just knew ahead of time this was like where we wanted to be. But something like No Jumper or um, Barstool Sports, we analyze the demographics. We know who our audience is. And going into No Jumper, Caught, like we had a lot of prep because mm -hmm. we're like, we're going to get crushed in the comments. And, mm -hmm. you know, there are times I have to be spiritually fit in order to read the comments because it, it's baffling to me. They don't understand. They're like, how could you do this to your teenager? Your teenager is going to commit suicide. And my teenager will sometimes pop into the comments like, why do they think this? Mm -hmm. And like, because that's how a lot of society is. They don't think that being transparent in your family, being open and honest and doing something like this isn't so catastrophic, isn't yeah. so end all be all like you were saying. And honestly, those comments make me feel more badly for those people in the comments. They're like, oh, if my mom did this, I would end it all. And it's like, I would feel so awful if I were that person to mm -hmm. think that if my mom were to do something that made her happy, I would 
end it. Like, mm-hmm. you know, you know what I mean? Like, it's just. It's, well, it also suggests a sense of shame about sex and sexuality that person carries around with them. Right. Yes. yes. Because everybody, those people who leave those comments and, you know, I get those on my YouTube course, channel. Yeah. So don't get me, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But it comes from people who were raised with this, this real like sense of shame and fear around sex. And, and so. They can't, yeah, exactly, and guilt. And so they can't, they look at people like you and they yes. say, I could never do such a thing. Sure. So therefore, how could they do such a thing? Because I believe that everybody sees the world as I see it. Yes. And they can't imagine that other that's people it. see it differently. And I think that's like the big issue with mm-hmm. with stigma and with just society at large. That is so wild that you just said that. I've been talking about synchronicity or synchron is that yeah, synchronicity constantly and I literally just thought about that today how everyone wants people to think like they do and that they know best and mm-hmm. that their lot everyone should run their lives the way that we do. And I <laughs> this probably sounds like a little egotistical, but I actually thought today wow, I really wish that like more people felt comfortable the way that we do. Yeah, yeah and I do too. It's diff- it's different coming from this side because we want better things for people instead of people saying, oh, you should be like me because you're bad. Do How you know about what the I ones mean? last week just from um, being on Barstool Sports and they commented, you are um, a horrible mother. How sickening that you are, you'll love this one, allowing her to do this. And I was like, She's 25, first of all. Allowing Nobody could tell me. me what to do at 25. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I support her in whatever it is that she's doing. Unless she says, hey, I'm going to start committing mass murders. <laughs> I'm not on board. Anything <laughs> other than that, like, I'm okay with well, it. Well, that's directly hurting other people. Yes, yes. Right? right. And this isn't. And I've done my whole life wanting to be a good mom. And and I know that I have. I'm sure I've fallen short and I've screwed up many times with things. But not with this. No. Yeah. No, I, I will say it's funny because I actually just, I had Alexis Tay on earlier and I oh, literally nice. just told this story because we talked about her wanting to have uh, a family one day and, but I'm going to tell the story again. So too bad listeners, you're going to hear the same story <laughs> twice, two episodes in a row. But so before I was born, my, you know, so my mother was a pornographer. Mm -hmm. Um, She's retired now. And um, in the 70s, she was the first uh, female staff photographer for Playboy. She wasn't the first photographer, female photographer for first photographer on staff. Then she worked for Hustler and worked for Penthouse, et cetera. So when she was working at Hustler, she wrote a book called Suze, which is like this kind of salacious, like tell all about her life, like her time at the Playboy Mansion and like her yeah. swinging like my parents were swingers and Sweet. like all the celebrities she had so sex cool. with <laughs> and like all this like crazy shit, you know? Mm-hmm. I'm buying that book. <laughs> um, so it's actually, um, it's out of print. Oh. We are though working on an audiobook okay. and we're going to reissue it. But right now it is out of print. I could get you a, a personal copy though, mm-hmm. if you want one. So, but you actually I cannot would buy that. it in stores Same. right now. I will buy it from you. I don't want anything for free. <laughs> um, so anyhow, so she went on a press tour and this was a year before I was born. And um, the journalist asked her, they said, you know, do you want children? Mm-hmm. And she said, yes, absolutely. I'd love to have a family. And he said, what kind of mother are you going to be? You know, and this is the 70s, right? So like very sexist. Yeah. Like um, what kind of mother are you going to be? You know, you wrote this book. You've had sex with all these people. You shoot porn. Like what are you going to tell your kids? Yeah. How are you going to raise your children? And she said, I'm going to raise my children like, you know, everyone should raise their children and teach them about compassion and about honesty and about all the things that matter in life. She said, what else is there to teach your children? And he said, well, what about, you know, your grandchildren and this book? And they say, oh, you know, my grandmother was up to all of these dirty things. Like, how are they going to feel about you? And it, and I just feel like it was such a poignant thing that she said, because this is back then. And I look at the times now, she said, my grandchildren aren't going to give a damn about what granny did when she was in her 20s and she was out there having fun. And you know what? Society is going to be different then. We're not going to be so uptight about sex and we're not going to be so incredibly judgmental about it the way that you are. And like, and then I was literally conceived like two months later and then born like a year later. That's so phenomenal. <laughs> I just find it amazing that she she had this conversation yeah. right before I was born. And I very much feel that way. You know, I'm extremely close to my family. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a brother and a sister who are not in porn at all, but we're all super close. Like, I love my parents. My parents were amazing parents to me. Like, the fact that they worked in porn was just like their job, you know, but it's like, I don't think, and if anything, like you said, like 
the open relationship and like the comfort that I have with my parents and the fact that we can sit around the dinner table and like make dick jokes and laugh about it. I feel like makes our relationship like (laughs) that much better. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. That's so funny that you said that because one, a lot of comments are always like, what about your kids' friends when they come over? I said, do you think I'm sitting around naked playing with my vagina and I'm, (laughs) they walk in to like, you know, play video games and I'm spread Eagle on the couch. Yeah. They walk in. Now I do want to say at the very beginning, the first few times they would come in, They come through this door. I'm in the living room and they did kind of, I think they were expecting something different. And once they realized, oh, it's still just her. Yeah. You know, now they're like, hey, cool. I saw your TikTok. You know, the kids, it's now a flex for my teenager that I was on these podcasts and that I have had sex with Johnny since my former (laughs) high school student and the kids love it. And my kids gotten a lot of clout from it. So, (laughs) yeah. And I wanted to ask you about that. Um, because that is hilarious that Johnny was your student. And by the way, I I love Johnny. We used to shoot him back in the day, like when he actually shot for, for companies. Um, but, uh, so yeah, tell me about like that. How did you guys reconnect and, and what was that scene like? Yeah. So, um, right when I started out, I knew I needed to find larger um, creators to shout me out. Mm-hmm. I knew I wouldn't get my name out. And I started looking for people. And when I saw Johnny Sins, I sent a message on, what is that called? Shout Out Express. And mm-hmm. I'm like, hey, want to shout me out? And we just laughed and it became this thing. And he shouted me out and was like, oh my God, my high school teacher, um, here she is. And here I am. Maybe we should collab. That was in the end of 2020. And he and I both had such busy schedules. And then he was moving. He's in Vegas. Then he was visiting um, Kissa in Hawaii. Like, we just couldn't connect. And then we finally did. And when we did, there was such pressure for me personally because I'm like, it's Johnny Sins. And I'm just like, you know, mom from the suburbs who's – I'm now 52. And he said, do you know you are my most requested collab? And I'm like – Thanks for the pressure. (laughs) Thank you, dear sir. And so we did shoot and it was a huge success and um, it was just wild and everyone loved it. I loved it. Um, But it was just cool. And the, the cool thing was when I first started going mainstream. I had no idea I was going mainstream. I didn't Mm. think that was in my plans. And I tweeted hey, today five different people told me I need to be on browsers. And within an hour, Kieran Lee, Mr. You know, Penis Insured for a Million Dollars, saw it, replied and said, I agree. I want to direct you. Come to LA. Within a month, I'm in LA naked on a browser set with um, Van Wilde and Kieran Lee. And I was like in my head going, what the fuck is going on? (laughs) I just meant to make a couple extra bucks and this is wild. And I loved it. That was cool. It did really well. And then I started getting more jobs from there, Mm -hmm. but it's just been, yeah, I'm mind blown every day. Still Johnny say that like he fantasized about you when you were his teacher. Yes. Yeah, he did. But people ask me if I did and I'm like, no, that's so gross. Yeah. He was a kid. (laughs) Yeah. And and also, like, yeah, I, I, I'm sorry, but I look at, like, a 16 or a 17-year-old. Yeah, no thank and you. And there's nothing. Like, no. Pass. No. Just, well, my – Huge pass. Yeah. <laughs> my child is a now trans female um, 16-year-old, but when this started, she was a 14-year-old teenager. And those kids, sorry, honey, but – they're gross and they're dirty and they're always out skateboarding and doing dirty things like where they're messy and they're just so not attractive at that age and they're kids. And yeah. I'm like, no, never. Yeah. Yeah. Like, they're ew. Kids. <laughs> right? Very much so. All right, guys, uh, we are going to take a quick commercial break and we'll be right back. Was meditating more regularly one of your intentions for this year? How's it going? Whether you're crushing your goals or you need a little boost, calm can help. With Calm, you can jumpstart or continue your meditation practice and find peace of mind today. I'm so excited to be partnering with Calm, the number one mental wellness app, to give you the tools that you need to improve the way you feel. Reduce stress and anxiety through guided meditations, improve focus with curated music tracks, and rest and recharge with Calm's imaginative sleep stories to help lull you into dreamland. There's even new daily movement sessions designed to relax your body and uplift your mind. 
If you go to calm.com slash holly, you get a special offer of 40% off of a Calm premium subscription and new content is added every week. Go to calm.com slash holly for 40% off of an unlimited access to Calm's entire library. Over 100 million people around the world use Calm to take care of their minds and now you can too. That's calm.com slash holly. You'll wonder why you didn't start using it earlier. All right, everybody, we are back. So uh, you both have award nominations this year. Uh, Ginger for ABN's Hottest MILF and XBiz MILF Premium Social Media Star and Amber for the XBiz Cam Awards. Um, How was that for you guys? It was really cool. So the first one, the ABN Award for Hottest MILF of the Year, I almost died. I was like, are you kidding me? I've only been in the industry, the actual mainstream industry for a year. And um, Cherie DeVille and Alexis Fox and Nikki Benz and and Brandy Lev had all kind of extended their milfdom to me and their ex, you know, expertise. And when someone says, do you want to do this? Um, I message them and I'm mm-hmm. like, they're asking my rates. I don't know what my rates are. Yeah. Tell me what to do. So these amazing women who have been in the industry for so long were very welcoming and opening in guiding me to not fuck up all the time. Mm-hmm. And when I would be nominated, I'm like, do I keep posting it? And they're like, no, that's really trashy. And you don't want to be known as someone who's, um, what was the word? Like being- fishing fishing and needy and desperate. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, so there's a fine line. So to be nominated among those women blew my mind. I was, I was in shock and I knew I wouldn't win. I never wanted, I mean, sure. It'd be great to win, but I was just so excited to be nominated. And because of COVID it was done, um, the AVNs were on remote. And so I bought a dress and I'm single. Um, And I have my golden doodle, Rudy, who's my best friend. So I'm like, Rudy, we're going to watch the AVNs tonight. And we sat with my like sparkle dress on and he's on them in the little thing, like in the little picture. And we watched the AVNs. So, and I think Alexis won that one, which she works like crazy. So that was kind of cool. And then the next one, I was like, oh my gosh. And when it happened, we were at a family event. And my phone blew up, her phone blew up, and it was um, Triple X Star PR, big shout out to them for being the best PR company, had messaged me, and she's like, hey, did he message you? And I'm like, yeah, he wants a call. So we waited till no one was around because we don't do this at family events. Mm-hmm. We're like, what's up? And he was like, congrats, you're both nominated. We were like, what? And I'm like, holy shit, not for the same thing though. And he's like, no, 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 you've got the best MILF of the year um, premium star and she is for um rising premium social media star okay i was actually like shocked because i thought that it was something that they put me in for and i was like oh okay and he said no 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 this is like you were voted fan to generated. be like, fan generated person or um nominee yeah and then i was like <laughs> okay <laughs> like wow. wow it's crazy um so it was really fun it was really cool and um similar to my mom um of course it would have been cool to win but after like looking at all of the other nominees and seeing that I had the smallest following <laughs> I was like it's probably out of reach um I tried my best and I put I put it out there um however free I don't remember how frequently I did I think I did once a week and um yeah, I didn't. I didn't end up winning, but um, I forget who did win. I think her name is Scarlett. Yeah, but she's she's really cool. Yeah, mm-hmm. I love her content. So and it opened up a lot of brand deals. A lot of yeah. brands do reach out to her. They reach out to both of us, but especially her because the social media presence. It's what she's good at. Have you seen her TikToks? Mm-mm. You have to follow her on TikTok. They're okay. phenomenal. And I will follow you if I still have an account after this interview is over. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Her, it's just because that's what she does and the performing. And I'm like, look at her go. And that's the hard thing with the brand deals, though, because that's the goal is to get large enough to start doing brand deals and start moving into the creator space. Do you know what I mean? And it's hard to do that when our profiles keep getting taken down because then you lose the following and then you lose the notoriety. So yeah. like no one wants to do a brand deal with someone with 2000 followers. I mean, right. that's a lie, but like the brands right that now. we would want, you know yeah. what I mean? It's just not, 
that's the most frustrating part because that's what we're working toward. And every time that happens, it's such a major setback. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's incredibly frustrating. I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. I mean, I, I finally got one of my videos to go viral. It's like over a million views now. And that took me so long to get there. And that yeah. happened at the same time that like TikTok was like, we're about to delete your account. I'm like, come on, man. Yeah. Try the promoting. I will. For real. I will for sure. We're going to, you guys are going to give me a little lesson after Absolutely. this. I think. We'll help in any way because they're, we don't know much about much, but this one thing we do know a lot about and they still delete our accounts, but that's going to happen. Yeah. yeah. But Losing an account at two million and three hundred forty-five thousand, I was in a depression. I'm not even kidding. For about ten days, because yeah. I thought there go my brand deals, and there went the brand deals, mm -hmm. and no one will respond to my um, my messages anymore because they think you're like fake, like or they just think who is she? You. She has seven. I have seven thousand followers right now. Yeah, and so yeah, I mean that's a thing. It's like you know sometimes you'll get met with that reaction of, oh, boo hoo, you lost your Instagram. Well, for us, it's not about likes and popularity. It's literally about money. And the way that the landscape has changed these days is that the only place that we have to promote our brand, um, our services, if that's what you want to call them, is on social media. That's yes. the place. Yep. And so when you lose that following, it's, it's losing money. It's not about like losing clout. It's about that's it. That. And the double standard is insane. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if mm -hmm. you noticed, but last year on TikTok, when you were go when you um, had a video taken down for a community guidelines violation, you could report it. You could write out like a 500 character like appeal and attach some images. So every time that would happen, and this is no shade to these people, I'm actually obsessed with them. I, I would include screenshots of TikToks that Lizzo made and um, Meg Nutt and like all these people who just like there's for some reason like a blind eye turn to them and say, hey, my video is just like this. I'm just doing the trend. Like, please reinstate it. And nine times out of 10, they would. And then a few months of doing that, they uh, and a lot of people doing that because I started recommending that to people. They were like, they're not um, approving my appeal. And I said, you need evidence. Like this is yeah. you're literally your own little mini lawyer on TikTok. Mm -hmm. And so I started telling other people to do it. And I'm sure other people were doing it already. They took that option away. I was going to say, you can just I, appeal it now and that's it. I appealed some of my videos and there was nowhere for oh, me no. to write no, no, or anymore. anything. They got rid because of it. they quickly realized, oh, oh, don't let these people have a voice. Don't let them argue their case. That's yeah. insane. Yeah. <laughs> and this is important. Um, I have paid now one guy specifically for uh, $45,000 to get my Instagram account, $5,000 a pop. He would get it back for a couple of weeks. It would go down again. And it wasn't him taking it down because he would get it back a few more times for free after that because people were like, oh, he's taking it down. So he, you'll pay yeah, him again. Yeah. And there are people out there like that. They can't get our accounts back. And it's, oh. I just Sorry. also need to restate, I love Lizzo and Meg Nutt. I just don't want this to come out as like a hate thing. Yeah, no, no, of course. <laughs> it's just like, they can do it. Why can't I? Yeah, I know. We, we, see that. we see that all the time. I mean, I see... Um, like friends of mine who shoot, you know, pretty like they'll shoot, they'll post full nudes with like a line through the nipple and you can still see the nipple, but because it's for Playboy, they'll let it. How about Danny Banks? Like, okay. Love Danny Banks. Do you know who Danny Banks is? I don't think so. So she's a creator. She will post and Danny, you know, I love you, but I want your connect. I don't care who I have to fuck to get it. <laughs> like really? She does spread eagle, labia out, wet vagina, and they let it go. And I'm like, I've is got clothes. Photos? Photos. Oh yeah. They love her and they let her go through. And I do clothes legs, no wetness, no labia, Turtle turtleneck, neck. corduroys, banned. <laughs> so That's insane. Yeah. You've gone through 11, 12, 13. I'm on my 12th, 13th, and 14th accounts right now. Wow. And you've been IP banned and I've been face banned from Instagram. I have to hide my face and use f different filters to kind of make myself not look like me. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Um, so I, I want to talk about, uh, another subject, Ginger, which is like one of my favorite topics cause it's very close to my heart. Yes. Um, you're very open about your sobriety. Yes. Um, I don't know if you know this, but I'm also sober. <gasps> 
So I did not know that. Wait, yes. I did. I reached out to you at the very beginning. I probably had five followers. I'm like, hey, me too. Oh, did I respond? Probably not, but you were probably like, who is this girl? I, I also don't ever, I have to admit, I delete, I never look at my Instagram. Yeah, videos. no, it's okay. Tell but, me more. That's exciting. Congrats to you. Well, everybody knows my story um, and we're here to hear your story, but I will say, so I was a raging alcoholic for years. All It started in high school, got really bad in college. Um, I got sober at 28. I was sober for seven years. Okay. Um, and then I relapsed and then I spent four and a half years trying to get sober and I will now have four years on July 6th. July 6th. God willing. Um, so yeah, so I'm like, it's a big part of my life, big part of my identity. Yes. It's what saved me. It's what made me who I am. Um, and I'm actually incredibly grateful for all of those like excruciating experiences. So tell me about your story. I would love to. Um, so I am 52 now and this September 8th, I will have 19 years, um, clean and sober. And it was quite the journey. Um, I was a partier in high school, a fun time partier. I never knew until college that not everyone blacks out <laughs> like me. Yeah. And I ended up going to rehab in, for the first time in 1993 for alcohol. Up until then, so I dated this guy. You'll appreciate this. I dated this guy for 10 years. And in 1989, his dad, who was sober, said, hey, I go to these meetings. Would you like to come with me? And people like us are always down to do anything. I'm like, hell yeah, I'll go to your meeting. So he took me to an AA meeting. Didn't say like, you need it. But I went and he said, what did you think? And I said, that was so cool. If I ever meet anyone who needs that kind of help, I'm going to yeah. send them to you. <laughs> <laughs> and he planted the seed. And so to Jim T from Pittsburgh, I am incredibly grateful to you forever uh, from there, when I went to treatment um, for alcohol, I didn't know I couldn't take Xanax and that I couldn't take pain pills and smoke weed. Nobody told me that or do a couple lines of Coke. Just real quick aside, because you just reminded me that the first time I went to rehab, my mom tried to mail me Xanax because she didn't realize <laughs> right. that I couldn't take it and she thought I needed it to help oh, me of sleep. Of course. Yeah. She yeah. honestly like thought... It was helpful because my parents had – no one in my family has ever gotten sober but me. Mm. So my parents had no idea how to deal with it. But I had forgotten about that till you said that. So anyway, Which one of your parents is the alcoholic or addict? Um, my father. Okay. My father is too. And my dad was a – my dad is Italian from Brooklyn. He's a raging Guido. He's 70 – how old is he? 79? He turns 80 this he year. He turns 80 this year. And he was a wild – think Ray Liotta, R.I.P. Ray – um, Italian cocaine, uh, dealer user. There was Coke everywhere for me growing up. And I swore I'd never be like my dad. That's what I always said. And, um, lots of rehab stints, <laughs> lots of rehab stints actually. And it just got worse and worse. And I suffer from something called endometriosis. I had the highest stage of it where I was having surgeries constantly to try to fix this. And I was given a Percocet at the time, and I was like, oh, where have you been my whole life? Mm -hmm. Like, this was it. And it was, if you've seen the TV series, um, which one, what was the most recent one called where they took down Purdue Pharma for the OxyContin? Oh, yes. Um, I was addicted to OxyContin during all of that because the doctor said, you can't get addicted. The farm reps told us that you can take these for pain. You'll never have a problem. Dope sick. Dope sick was the name of the show. I was so strung out. I was so sick. And my dad ended up getting sober to help me. He's been sober ever since. Wow. Yeah. And it was a long road of that. I had been to multiple treatment centers. Um, I tried to end my life because I couldn't stop using. And the last place I went, I will plug, um, I went to Silver Hill Hospital. It's right outside Greenwich, Connecticut, and they were able to treat my depression and my um, addiction and alcoholism, and I've been sober ever since. I'm extremely involved in the community that supports um, different ways to um, maintain sobriety. I'm trying to be uh, sensitive to the unspoken rules of that. Um, we don't talk about it publicly, but there are multiple ways of maintaining sobriety. And it's been, you know, at first it was hard, but my child 
knew me using and she was six or seven when I got clean and um, she doesn't me- she doesn't remember it thank God for any parent that's worried that they have destroyed their child's life tell the story about when you were trying to make amends with me yeah I had a really rough time thinking oh my gosh she's never going to forgive me and I was picking her up at summer camp and I was all ready for it and I said listen I was a terrible mom for the first few years of your life, and I wasn't there. Um, I did some horrible things, and I am so sorry, and I want to make an amends to you. And um, I can tell you, a day at a time, it won't happen again. And she goes, okay, mom, cool. Can we go to Dairy Queen? (laughs) (laughs) And it just shows me how much, for me at least, it was so much bigger to me because all I wanted was to be a good mom. and. Somebody said to me, and I passed this on to women that I help, they said, are you done robbing your kid of the childhood she deserves? And that moment, that phrase still kills me to today. And I have made a commitment on a daily basis not to um, drink or use drugs in any form to be the best um, person. Be the best you you can be. Yeah, I say that every day. Be the best mom, person, friend. I can be, and I fall short with my isms, but not with the, um, the using and, you know, life's tough and yeah. it's the hardest thing I've ever done. And I'm so grateful and I'm so happy to be on this path with you. Yeah. So if you ever want to chat, you know, sobriety and stuff. Isn't it amazing though? Like how the hardest thing, like for me, when I came out of it, I just thought, man, if I can do this, I can do anything. And anything. it, and it anything. gave me, I think a sense of confidence. Um, yeah. And also like a kind of like weird faith. I'm not religious or any way, but that like I could like whatever it was, I could get through it. Yes. You know? Yes. And to take that even a step further, um, we can get through anything, but it has also, I don't know if you can relate, given me this unfortunate, not a numbness, but an apathy or there's no time to get too stressed out about things. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't let things bother me as much or fall apart as much. You know, I mentioned my mom is very ill with cancer and I know we have to take care of business and, um, being sober gives me the ability to think with a clear mind, do what needs to be done. Somehow I'm in charge and I kind of like look up, I'm not religious either. Like, whoa, I'm the fuck up. How am I in charge of this? Like, Mm -hmm. ah, I can't believe this. Um, But it's just given me, things don't stress me out like most Mm -hmm. normies. Um, Yeah. I think like you think, you know, you realize like the, what's important in life. That's it. Yeah. Don't sweat the small stuff. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Don't sweat the small stuff. I mean, whenever I talk to my sponsor, And I complain about my day and she's like, these are quality problems to have. Yeah. Like, remember when your biggest problem was like, you couldn't get up in the morning without having a drink. Yep. And I'd be like, yeah, that's so true. I couldn't take a shower because my skin hurt so badly from withdrawal from OxyContin and it hurt. And I remember calling my sponsor and saying, I can't take a shower. It hurts too much. And she said, you know, it's going to be okay. And so- to be able to be where we all are today is um, it's a miracle. Yeah. We yeah. do this thing every time we have a meal called high low where you um, say like the best parts of your day and the worst parts of your day and the best days are when the bad parts are like, I had a headache. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just to put everything in perspective, we always do that when we're together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And gratitude lists. Yeah. I do yeah. that a lot. Yep. Me yeah, too. that was definitely like a big thing that helped me get sober the second time around because I was so angry, you know, and I think it was so the the relapse was hard for me because I knew what life was like on the in a way it was harder to get sober the second time because yes. like I knew what life was like on the other side. I knew it was so much better. I mm-hmm. knew how much happier I was. I had built a business and all of these things. Um, before I got sober the first time, I didn't, you know, I thought a life of sobriety would be so boring and I would, how could I ever like travel to Italy? I couldn't like drink the wine. Like, you know, how could I ever have a birthday? How could I yeah. get married without champagne? All of these things. And the second time, like I knew how much better sobriety was, but I like couldn't get there. I kept yeah. slipping. I'd get like a few months and then I'd, 
I'd relapse and I was just like, why can't you get there? You know, it's better there. Yeah. And it was really hard. And the gratitude list really helped me. And I really do believe like, cause I also love, you know, kind of looking at the science of the brain yes. when you kind of create these new pathways in your brain by, instead of looking at the negatives in life, looking at the positives in life, you can actually start to, cause there's so much neuroplasticity. You can start to change the way that you think literally, but you have to like force yourself to do these exercises. And then yes. now I find that when I'm when I come to, you know, something that upsets me, like just yesterday, I, I found out some like just very stressful work stuff. And instead of going immediately to the negative, I went to, well, at least I have this and I have this and yes. I have this. And that was something that I never had before. So I feel, I feel grateful that alcoholism forced me to learn these coping tools for life. Yes. I feel like it was it? a gift. Yes. I wish everybody had to have them. Yeah. And as much as we're not supposed to raise our children as little sponsees, my kids have had the benefit and I will hear them use some of our, you know, cliches or nuances. And, uh, we were talking with my younger child right before we came here and I had said something and she was like, but it's not going to matter in a day or a week, month or a year. And there's nothing I can do about it because I taught them about powerlessness mm -hmm. and can you affect this, you know, change in this. And if you can't, got to accept it. And to hear that back from them is like, okay, kudos mom. Cause actually her, cause she's 16. Yeah. 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 She's really got a, a grasp on a lot of the coping mechanisms as it, as have you. And so it's been kind of cool to watch. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I see that like you get like emotional when your mom tells your story, like, are you proud of her? I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm so proud of her. And I don't remember anything negative about her growing up. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. she you've told me that you've always been worried that I would only focus on those things from before you got sober. And I don't even know what she's talking about. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because oh, and it's those things. I know you know what I mean. Those things that you've done and that you're like, oh, <laughs> like, yeah. ah, I can't believe I did that. Yeah. And that she doesn't remember them. And it's not that she's blocked them out. They just weren't as impactful to her mm -hmm. as they felt to me in hindsight. So, yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Well, it's been so amazing having you guys on. This has been like a really cool episode. Thank you. Like we all cried a little bit. I know that means it's been a good one. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for doing this what you do. so and, great. Yes. Thank you. And having us and Finally getting to meet you has been such an honor. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, all right, Amber, let's start with you. Do you want to tell everybody where they can find you online? Yes, as long as they still exist right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so my Instagram is it's Amber Blake XO. My Twitter is Amber Blake XO. And my TikTok, oh, my TikTok is Amber Blake VIP. They used to all be the same username. They're not anymore because they were deleted. So sorry about that. Um, and you can find me on OnlyFans at AmberBlake.Fans. And if you say that you found me from seeing me and my mom on the Holly Randall podcast, then I will send you a freebie. Oh, that's a good. Look at you and your marketing plays. Oh, yeah. This we both is always so do that. good. What a great way to keep track of like what PR is worthwhile and what isn't. Oh, yeah. I love that. Yeah. You guys better fucking go join her OnlyFans. Don't make me look bad. <laughs> <laughs> and also, just as a side note, if you ever can't find me, but you have found her, we do shout each other out. So you'll be able cool. to find her on my pages. And vice and, versa. And vice versa. Um, to get the freebie on my OnlyFans, it is Mrs. Robinson.fans. If you just want to go right there for the good stuff, I did just drop some new fire. So go check it out. Mention Holly Randall, and you'll get your freebie. Um, I'm on Twitter, uh, Mrs. Robinson XO. I'm on TikTok, which is Mrs. Robinson with just an extra N. And that's where I'm silly and goofy. So definitely go there to see what a goofball I am. And Instagram, I have three new accounts. <laughs> and I don't even know um, if they even have my name in them anymore. Um, let Mrs. Live. Let Mrs. R live is one of no, them. Just, I think it's just Mrs. No, let Mrs. R live. And then there is, um, what else? They did it again, XO, meaning they <laughs> took me down. Oh, and real dot Mrs. Dot Robinson. And I'm active on all three, but just keep following me. And 
we appreciate you. We appreciate you guys following us. Please say hi. And um, thank you again, Holly, for having us. Yes, of course. <laughs> if you can't find her on Instagram, you can find her through my page as well. We'll find you somehow. Yeah. yeah just don't give up, please. <laughs> we're there and we're fun. <laughs> and you guys can find me on Instagram and on Twitter at Holly Randall. And of course, if you want to support this podcast, go to patreon.com slash Holly Randall and filtered where you can watch interviews like this live. Thank you guys so much for joining us and I'll see you next week. <laughs>